love how it does that. It's just so cool. What's going on, YouTube? Today I've got the E-Flight Cirrus SR22T flying this on behalf of Hangar 18 Hobbies here in beautiful Cary, North Carolina. If you guys are local, I highly recommend you go swing by the shop, tell Brian hello, tell him I said hi, and maybe pick something up while you're there. It's a great local business, and they're beginning to expand pretty soon, so pretty soon you should be able to start ordering stuff from their website, which is hangar18hobbies.com. You'll see their info all throughout this video. Today we're gonna do something a little different with this final review of this model. We're gonna show you guys compare and contrast how Tony and I both fly it. So you're gonna see a couple flights of me, you're gonna see a couple flights of him, and then you can get a real true perspective of how two different people handle this and what to expect from it. Also, let me go ahead and uh, put this thing down. You'll see that the battery has been shoved as about as far back as I can get it. So I can get about a neutral balance point on the wing or as close to it as I'm gonna get without having the battery go in the wrong spot. And Tony will be able to zoom in here, but you'll see a couple of toothpicks I shoved in there those will prevent the battery from ever sliding out. I also have, uh, what do you call it, a uh, Craftsman shelf liner from Lowe's, which is that black stuff it's sitting on. And I also took the air holes out of the front. If you can zoom into the, the snoot there and, and the intakes, you can see through it now. Um, Horizon said not to do that because there's like, supposedly the, the foam holes that they have there, or the, the foam plugs that they put there, supposedly direct airflow better, but I find that in a couple of test flights that I did, the airflow actually is better on the ESC and you're hitting about 145 degrees. And this air right now is like, what is it currently out here? 83, so that's not half bad. So I'm gonna have to disagree with Horizon on that one. Again, let's take a look at the ground handling. Thing basically moves like it's got differential brakes. This is just full rudder. If you've seen any of the vids earlier with Mark's Cirrus full scale flying at this airport, it doesn't look much different than this, except it, it can stop even better. So the ground handling on this model is really impressive. So let's go ahead and get her taxied out. 16.6 volts. Drop the flaps 50. to half. And before we taxi out and fly, I need to show you guys where the new balancing point is too, now that I'm talking about it. You guys think it's easy to do this kind of stuff, but there's so many things I got to keep track of in my head as I fly. Narration is just one of many things we have to do. All right, so we are balancing right now, slightly nose down, about where that fuel tank sticker is on the wing, like slightly in front of that. I don't know what the exact measurement of that is, but I guarantee it's about 61 millimeters, which is what the original manual CG called for. And my testing with it flew really well, but we're about to find out. Flaps up, flaps 50. All right, let's go. 30 seconds. Flaps up. I love this thing. I always wanted it when I first saw it. And it was just a shame that it had gotten discontinued by the time I'd wanted to pick it up. Volts. But it's phenomenal the way it handles. Feels so locked in in the sky. It's basically like, it is pretty much a uh, very, very accurate representation of what I've heard that the full scale flies like. Sixteen volts. Quick outside loop. Quick reverse roll to turn it around. Quick knife edge spin. I would have turned toward us there, but I didn't feel like I could have throttled out without stalling. Drop the flaps, get in real slow. Pull the flaps up. See if we can get her to do kind of a, about as level of a turn as we're gonna get. Use some rudder to turn her around. Full flaps. Flaps coming in, slow her down real good. Going about 15 to 20 miles an hour right now. Flaps up. Don't even need the GPS to know. 15.2 volts. Make her up, Two kick minutes. her into a hammerhead. A lot of yaw coupling, as you can see. It's one of the things you need to watch out for when you're in knife edge, perhaps. As you give extra rudder input, the plane will 
kind of depart towards the back. You got to add stick into it and yeah, turn it into a stall. Cool. Got bugs all up on my face again. We even spray ourselves a bug spray and you still can't get away from these heinous little creatures. 14.9 volts. I love how it does that. It's just so cool. Quick slow roll. Bring her in for a nice low approach. Whoa, got a little sloppy there. Be careful when you're pushing up and invert it. The plane is a little touchy. Show you what that looks like when we go full invert it and then push over, it may get very unstable. Okay, starting to push now with some throttle. See how it basically flips over itself after it reaches the stall point. It's got a tiny elevator, but it's very effective, surprisingly. Rudder's pretty effective too in those crappy slow turns I just did. 15.2 volts. Got to give it some stick pressure even with the CG where it's at currently. It is definitely not neutral at all. If it was neutral, I could just fly it hands off. All right, let's go ahead, flip her upside down, kick her into quick stall, flaps. throw the flaps out, come in for a touch and go. Watch out for the mud down at the bottom there. Threading the needle, I got about three feet of space to work with before the plane goes into the mud. Bring it to a knife edge pass, nice and low. I think we can get lower than that though, so let's go ahead and turn her. Keep the rudder input, there we go. These trees are kind of sketching me out, I wonder if I'm getting too close to them. So we'll turn around again, keep the airspeed up, volts. get lower, and then pop her into a knife edge, kind of like Tony does with the Four Viper minutes. Jet. There we go. It's, depending on airspeed, it's interesting, the yaw coupling effect is actually either forward or back. You actually have to manage it, which is why it doesn't look super smooth. So let me do that again, show you guys what to expect, at least with the center of gravity where it's at now, it does volts. actually at lower speeds push towards you and then at higher speeds pushes away from you. Okay, now it's pushing away. So I have to keep fighting with the stick on the right. It's definitely a weird plane. It wasn't really meant to do this, at least full scale. So a lot of the aerodynamics aren't really working towards favor here. Fourteen point five volts. Whoa, she's getting sloppy. Again, Five when you minutes. when you push invert it, the plane gets weird. Full flaps. Let's do a nice slow pass again. So you can do really much a lot of things with this model. Uh, I think you can even do rolling Harrys with it. I think I tried that once. Let's go ahead and give it a quick test. Flaps up. Check our, our voltage. 14.2 volts. Running out of power. This is on a 2230C smart pack. I should have said that in the beginning. I apologize for not. Okay, get her up nice and high just in case she departs. Yep. Definitely depart it. That's what I meant about uh, how the elevator is very touchy. So we're going to call it quits there. Let's go ahead and get leveled in for a pass or rather a landing. Dropping okay. flaps. Hands off the stick right now. Right now, anyway, hands off the stick. There we go. Just kind of gently correcting it, beginning the flare right about now. Thrust reverse. Engine okay, now let's see how good the ground handling really is. Avoid going into the mud. I mean, look at how quick that thing turns. It turns in less of its, like, it, it turns on a dime. That's the easiest way to put it. I also have full Dubro low bounce 2.25 inch wheels on it, including the nose wheel. I finally got those in, so I replaced it. I'll go ahead and pull this up so he doesn't have to bend down too much. So you can see those, they're nice and squishy. If I put it on the ground, you can see the suspension as I press the plane down. So they got a nice bounce to them. 
And honestly, yeah, this is easily one of the best flying planes you can get from Horizon right now. And I believe Hangar 18 has one in stock. If you're local, please go pick it up if you want to fly this plane because it probably won't be there long. That's how good this thing is. And it stays the same price point it did before. Unlike the Commander, which is $100 more than its original release, this has updated electronics all through it and it's still better than the original, except I had to replace servos. This guy right here, y'all asked for more of him. We are giving you more of what you want. I wanna see what the differences are and how he handles this plane versus how I do, and I cannot wait to see it. He did some really cool stuff last time. As usual, I'll probably do most of the talking, although he's welcome to speak up at any point, although he probably won't. Probably not. I'm not even sure I'm gonna do yet. Get up there. You get up there. All right, let's go ahead and get the ground view for you. Make sure all the switches are turned off too, like, you know, some of that stuff's stupid, the way I like to fly. Looks like you're good to go. Make sure you turn off the auto cut though. There you go. Yeah, my IX-20 is a uh, minefield of switches. There we go. Looking good, sir. Definitely makes me appreciate the work that he does with camera work for sure, having to do this. There we go. If I ever need a duck, let me know, okay? I'll let you know. All right, cool, appreciate that. Saw some guy earlier uh, was flying a P-38 and flew it right into someone's head. One of the flight line ones for Motion RC. That was uh, an interesting video to see. Yeah, man, got some good maneuvers up there. So it's only like my second flight on this thing, so. Yeah, for those of you guys who are new to the channel, Tony's the dedicated cameraman, but he does uh, like to fly. And in fact, he's the reason why I got into radio control aviation to begin with, because he had a, what was your plane? It was a uh, Park Zone FW190. There we go. Lost him for a moment there. FW190, yeah. And uh, a recurring joke was that anytime I breathe, it caused one of his planes to crash. So, but we've both come a long way since then. You aren't kidding. This thing does not like to fly upside down. Nope. That's why you gotta be real gentle with it. Yeah. I found out. That's what that was earlier, huh? That's why I lost track of it because I wasn't sure if we were, uh, what was going on for a second there. I wasn't sure either. <laughs> Again, this is why, he's <laughs> up here giggling. That's why I only let Tony fly my models. Very few other people have that privilege. Uh, Zach from Tail Heavy is one of them because he's just an accomplished, outstanding pilot. Tony's up there, he always practices full scale. So it's a, um, it's one of those things. It's like, I can trust that he's going to keep it in one piece every single time. You can see some of the Viper routine that he was doing on before is translated over to this model. And yeah, I mean, it's funny that this GA plane is so capable of doing all these maneuvers. But again, that's one of the things that I like about it too, is that you can use the uh, Metal Gear servo upgrade that I put into it. 60 bucks goes a long way. It gets you all the servos you need to replace and it makes the plane, ha you have peace of mind while you fly. You don't have to worry about the servos failing. And for the price point of these things, you know, the worst thing ever is to fly a plane and have it crash because of a servo failure. I've had that happen. Tony was there that day. We flew at Dorothea Dix Park in Raleigh and the elevator on the turbo timber popped loose and it was just nosedive straight in the ground and we were so lucky we didn't hit anyone with it. And by we, I mean me. I think really fishtails in the night touch. Yeah, it wasn't just me, is it? Yeah. It's, I think uh, it might be the center of gravity. Maybe it needs to be uh, nose heavier to have a proper track in knife edge. Okay. But, yeah. I don't know what all to do in the Have fun, man. When you're doing stuff right now. You're over here tearing it up. That's what the whole point of this channel is, right? Show what these things can really do. And it's not just in terms of like, how much can you stick smash? It's also how much can you keep precision aerobatics going on? So as part of this final review, you're getting a good idea of how Tony flies it. And I think he's definitely an above average radio control pilot, given his years of experience on the virtual Blue Angels. 
So that's another reason why I don't feel any smidge of terror with watching him fly, because I know it's not going to go into those trees or smash into the ground. And if it does, it's just more content for the channel, right? <laughs> I put my fair share of planes in the ground already. I'm step back and clear the runway. Not coming in yet. Coming in low is what you're doing. There we go. That was cool. Probably get ready to land that. Yeah. I didn't land this plane very good the first time, so. Yeah, but just watch the sink rate. Keep uh, keep on the thrust. Will. You will. I will step out of the way. <laughs> yeah, it, it likes to float a little bit. Oh! Oof. Oh! Oof. That's okay. Yeah. It survived, right? It did. I don't feel good about it. What do you feel? What do you have to say for yourself, young man? I didn't flip it over. <laughs> That's a classic response. I appreciate that. Did it scrape or anything? I wasn't able to tell. Uh, yeah, one of the wingtips. Ah, eh, no biggie. Let's take a look at it. Again, this stuff kind of happens, especially if uh, you're coming in on an unstabilized approach. I don't like how floaty it is. Well, I, need, I probably just need to take the flaps and, and turn them down a little bit, because it looks like they're a little excessive. <laughs> Had to have been a wingtip that scraped. Honestly, can't tell. Eh, it might have hit that little pitot tube on the edge of the wing there. On the, on the left wing, facing you. No. <laughs> so, no biggie. No biggie. It's just a foam model, right? Nothing that I can see. As we say, guys, breaking our stuff so you don't have to. Hi, guys. We are back with the E-Flight Cirrus. Reset. We're going to go ahead and take off. Just some adjustments to it to hopefully make it a little bit less floaty. Reduce the flaps. Go ahead and get her taxied out. Yeah, I'm glad I put the effort into... I walked like 400 feet of this taxiway spraying it with glyphosate the other day, and it was worth it because it's all this stuff's going to go away. Flaps up. 20 seconds. Yeah, don't like going upside down. This is on a uh, 4,000, sorry, 3,200 50C Smart Pack. Still feels pretty agile. Flying on behalf of Hangar 18 Hobbies here in beautiful North Carolina, of course. Final review of this model. Again, I went over in the initial review, the hinge quality on this model is outstanding. Volts. It feels like you're flying something that's a little bit more expensive than it actually is. For 299, you're getting an exceptional amount of quality. It's actually unreal how good these models are at the price points that they're at. Quick snap roll. Flat spin, look at it go. It doesn't want to come out of the flat spin, but sometimes they don't. That's why you gotta exit early until you know how they're gonna respond. Let's put it into a blender. 15.4 volts. After we get a little bit more altitude and get away from those trees over there, because we don't know how it's going to react with this uh, new balance point, about 61 millimeters, which is further back than I think the 53 they call for in the manual. Tail slide it. Holy crap. <laughs> that was interesting. I'm glad I put those toothpicks in the back to keep that battery from sliding around. I put two of them in there to give it some more reinforcement. You can see that it's a little bit more agile now. Um, that was probably the most violent blender I think I've ever seen a model do, and it was a super short one. Do it again. I gotta, I gotta give it like almost no, there we go. Weird, man, that is so weird. It was like constantly trying to knife edge spin up there. Yeah, like a rolling knife edge. It's almost like I intended to do that, but that was literally just some rudder and, and elevator input. Again, this is one of those models that makes you look like you're a better pilot than you actually 15 are. 15.7 volts. In some ways. All right, so somebody Two said minutes. you can get this thing to do a knife edge spin if you give it flaps. So we're going to do that real quick. Full flaps. Flaps coming out. They're on a, should be down by now. Flaps nope. up. Nope, and out of that. Yeah, I don't know about this thing doing knife edge spins the way people say it will. Let's try like with half flaps instead of full. Glad I put those AGF servos in there because they're going to hold up to this load that I'm giving it. 15.3 volts. Half laps coming in. Flaps yeah, up. this is not a knife edge spinning plan, and I didn't expect it would be given the, the shape of the wing.
I do echo Tony's sentiment earlier. Like this is such a good flying plane that's kind of easy to get very bored flying it. So that's kind of why I just go up and do crazy stuff with it. 14.7 volts. Another flat spin. Takes a moment to get it in. Also takes a moment to get it out. So good to just do one or two rotations and then say I'm done. Snap flaps. I haven't done snap flaps yet. Let's see what that does. Wow, that was a very, very strong accelerated stall, the way that thing looped over itself. That was literally nothing but pitch input. Man, I, I wonder if the, the, e, the, the actual serious designer is what they think about how this thing's flying. Did we do the reverse thrust test before? I think we did. Let's do it again while we're here. Did I just nose down as I throttled up? I think I did too, that's weird. Get up nice and high. It's gonna sound like a very angry cat in a, in a moment. Trust reversed. Engine normal. 14.5 volts. <laughs> right, let's do the inverted test. I think the battery might've come loose. Just maybe. No, we're good. It didn't go nowhere. I don't like doing knife edges away from myself like this. But sometimes you just got to get good and get over it, even though it is a little unstable feeling. At the center of gravity of this plane's at, I think it definitely needs uh, the battery to be further forward if you want it to be more stable and knife edge. Don't expect this plane to be like an aerobat. It can do aerobatic stuff, but it's not really purpose designed for it. It's more like I don't want to say a grandpa plane, but it's definitely meant for doing, you know, lazy loops and other sorts of stuff. Whoa. A little bit of shear, maybe kind of wonder if it was going to hit you. The, uh, the night, or sorry, the, the E-Flight Twin Otter did that too when you had floats on it. And the first time Tony and I flew it uh, at Symphony Lake here in Cary, it back front flipped over itself like three times in a row in the span of like its own fuselage. And it was kind of weird feeling. And we were both like, what the heck is this thing doing? We were like, is this already going to crash? Center of pressure is a real thing in models. And if you don't have the center of pressure calculated just right for the with the center of gravity too, things can get really weird really quick. I get the feeling it's going to start raining here soon. Let's do a minimum radius turn with it. Show you guys how, what it does in an accelerated stall. Get up nice and high. Keep the power on, start pulling back. It's not bad, even more power, even more throttle. Okay, we started losing the inboard wing, so lift started becoming asymmetric and it dropped. Let's do it with the cloud backdrop so it's a bit more visible. There's the right hand wing stalled, so it turned into a roll. 14.4. And then the left wing kept producing lift, which caused it to roll. If you don't get symmetric lift, you get a roll. That's why it's called an asymmetric stall. Don't call it a tip stall, guys. Let's, let's get past that, that terminology. It's, it's wrong. And there's no way to really know where the stall even forms unless you actually have the, the model in a wind tunnel. So it's just easier, well, maybe not easier, but it's more accurate to call it an asymmetric stall. And this is starting to get really windy out here. We should consider getting her down in case there's a thunderstorm coming. And we're actually starting to run low on battery power anyway. So let's go ahead and clear the runway. Maybe stay on the right. The majority there anyway. Full flaps. Full flaps coming in. We reduce the flaps so they're not barn doors anymore. Probably didn't need it. It's not as floaty anymore. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Flaps that was sheer. Six minutes. Get it away from Tony. You guys, uh, I remember that from the, the first uh, flight we did where uh, we flew in severe wind and the wind shear just made this plane look like it was going to wreck. Yeah, it's getting weird feeling. I think we got it though. Trust reverse. Engine there we go. Up. Yeah, I'm glad we got it down for that next wind gust because with how turbulent these winds are at this airport, it's very easy to get into a very high sink rate, which is known as wind, wind shear. When you got wind and it's not flowing over the over the, it's like it's like an air mass that's sinking basically, and the plane gets caught in it, it's just gonna fall. It's still flying technically, but it's being pushed down with the movement of the air. And it's very easy to lose a model like that. And like, it's not even stalling when it's, it's still flying. That's the thing. It's flying in that air mass, but it's just dropping like a rock. So when you see that, you need to throttle up and get out of it. I 
that's the safest way to do it. If you, you can always go around again, that's why, especially on windy days, save yourself enough power to go around multiple times. For the, uh, the final review here, I'm gonna go back and say, look at the, the hinge quality on this model. Just outstanding quality. This is like the turbo timber on the ailerons. Elevator uses CA hinges. I'm not thrilled about that, but it's not bad. Rudder uses basic foam hinges. Again, not bad. There's a light inside of here that actually lights up the cockpit, which is beautiful at night. The, uh, the lighting quality in this model is outstanding. You can even see them in the day. Overall, this is my one of my favorite looking models from Horizon Hobby in recent memory. This is the Viper 90. Uh, the F-16 too is also in the top three. This is just, I mean, it's really good. And even uh, like you can see the on the maiden day when I let Tony fly it, he kind of like had too much sink rate coming in and he snarfed it and hit the, the, um, the uh, wheel pant there. And even that wasn't a problem because I just painted it with some red testers gloss enamel and it took it right out. You can't even tell. Like Zooming in, you can barely see except for there's a little bit of rough plastic there. Um, overall, the presentation of this model is fantastic. Let's take a look at the, the ESC real quick and see what the last reading was uh, with removing the plugs. 140 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really good. Um, again, you can see it on the screen right here. 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Not joking with you guys. It's really outstanding quality. Just take those plugs out. It's not hard to do. Just take the cowling off. Uh, you can even just, you don't even have to do that. You can just poke them with like a stick or something that'll pop right out. And then you can just open the canopy and pull them out with a pair of tweezers. That's all you really have to do. Again, if you guys are local, get one from Hangar 18 Hobbies. I know they have one in stock still, or at least they did last time I was there. Um, tell Brian and the staff hello. We really love working with them. Um, I really love that they give us this opportunity to talk about these models without having to feel like we're being pressured to say super positive things all the time. Overall, this plane flies phenomenally, but be careful when you're inverted. You've seen that it does like to flip over itself with a little bit of elevator pressure and some throttle. It flies weird, inverted, but otherwise it's probably one of the most stable prop planes you're gonna get in the E-Flight line. And on top of that, I mean, just look at it. It's freaking beautiful. Like it really is. Everything about it. The only thing I don't like is the, the, the pilot figure. He looks kind of weird. <laughs> I almost want to replace him with the figure from the mall because he was a good luck charm. He never crashed, ever. Sometimes he flipped upside down in the water when we were doing float flying, but he never crashed. So, all right, guys. I hope that's, uh, you know, my final thoughts here. Hope you guys appreciate all this. The John score for this is a solid eight and a half, now nine out of 10. Um, I just love how it looks, the small shortcomings I have with it. I can gloss over that. If you get this thing and you like scale flying, you're gonna love it. If you like doing a little bit of 3D flying, you're gonna love it. It's just, it's a really good model. And I think you guys should pick it up and have fun. See you guys again out there.